Hey everybody, the Networkberg here. I hope you've been doing well. In today's video, we'll be going over LACP or 802.3AD. Uh, before we jump into all of the what it is and how to configure it, I just want to remind people to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video if you find any value in the content. And yeah, let's get into it. Right, so you see I've got a pretty base topology here. I've got a Mikrotik router because we're going to set it up on a Mikrotik router and I've got a couple of Cisco switches where we're going to configure the LACP on as well. So in the Cisco world, you might hear the term ether channel a lot and that is what Cisco uses to describe uh, whenever they use uh, aggregation um, features because they don't just use LACP on Cisco. There's also like PAG, P or whatever and that is a Cisco proprietary thing. We won't dive into that. I don't really even like that. And then we're going to look at LACP and that, that's what I want us to configure. So in essence, why do we want LACP? Well, what it does is it is an aggregation protocol. So it allows us to use two links simultaneously, which if you, <laughs> if you know a thing or two about servers, um, they, they can eat quite a bit of bandwidth at, at, a, at a point. And maybe you've only got one gig interfaces on that server and you're looking at ways to increase the throughput on it, LACP is a great way to do that because you can just bundle the two interfaces together and there you go, now you've got two gigs. Um, it doesn't effectively just give you a two gig link, it just allows you to be able to send two gig to the host and from the host. It'll make sense when we configure it. Another nice thing about LACP is it gives you a little bit of redundancy. So if one of the links should fail in the trunk, um, and that's what they call it for other vendors. You, you, you'll see that on HP and other vendors, literally. Only Cisco uses trunk when they're talking about uplinks to switches. Is if one of them dies, you're totally fine. You don't need to worry about one of the cables going off or one of the interfaces breaking. Because if it does go off, it's still going to remain up. So it, in, it decreases the downtime on the network which effectively does your job for you. So you, you've scored some serious points from your boss because you just gave us some extra redundancy, which is really nice. All right, so that is what LACP is. That's what we can use it for. Let's actually um, configure this. So I'm going to show you first how to do this on the Mikrotik. And I might do this from the Winbox now. Let's do it from here. Let's do it from the command line. So I'm, a lot of people seem to enjoy seeing command line. But I'll show you on Winbox how we've done it as well afterwards. So in order for us to bundle or create an Ether channel on Mikrotik, so to speak, is we're going to create a bond interface, a bonding interface. That's what Mikrotik calls it. So we're going to go into our interface bonding. And we're going to add an interface. I'm going to give it a name. And the name might be PO1, like you'd see on a Cisco topology. And then we're going to add also the mode. And this is where we select that it is LACP 802.3AD. We are going to select a hash policy. So this is going to be layer 2 and layer 3. Um, am I missing anything? Oh, yes, obviously. And we need to set our slaves. So the slaves is basically the interfaces that you're setting inside your bonded interfaces, inside the Ether channel, if you will. So in my topology, I'm going to set Ether 1 and Ether 2. Ether 1 and Ether 2. And boom, <laughs> that's it. Ta-da! It's, it's added. It's li literally added. So we've got a ether channel basically from this Mikrotik 3 and it's going to run to switch 2. So let's just configure switch 2 on the Cisco side just to get this up and running. So what I'm going to do is config T interface range and that is E0021. I am going to set this as a trunk switchboard trunk encapsulation dot one Q I'm going to set this as a trunk. But remember, this is just Cisco's way of sending all the VLANs across. This isn't me actually configuring the port channel or the ether channel yet. Uh, we're going to do that just now. So uh, let's just see channel group. 
that's what we want. So channel group. And then we can set it to whatever we want. So I'm going to use one mode. And if we set it as active, it is going to be LACP. It, that, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So hit enter. And let's get out of here. I just want to verify my interfaces are up. So my port channel is up cool and we can also just verify by looking at the ether channel summary and it's up it's working both interfaces are bundled so pretty cool what does this mean well it means if one of the links drop the other one can just take over or that we've got that increased throughput we can test to see if it's working by actually just adding ip addresses to the bonded interfaces ip address add let's add 10.0.0.1 on the Mikrotik slash 24 on PO1. And then let's do a similar thing here. Config T interface VLAN 1 IP address 10.0.0.2 slash. No, we can't do that. We give it the subnet mask. And that should be it. So if I ping across, it might fail for a little bit, but then it's going to obvious Cisco, you know, that first packet, that's just like learning the, the MAC address. Cool. So we've got that redundancy now between switch two and Mikrotik three. So I'm just going to run a lot of pings. Uh, repeat. And then let's just quickly drop one of the interfaces. So let's drop zero zero i've suspended the interface and it's still pinging it's probably because the traffic was leaving out over zero one so let's just bring that interface back into the topology and let's drop the other interface but that that's what i was talking about is traffic will come in the one interface leave the other it's quite normal um, but it gives you that increased throughput it's really really nice so let's suspend the link again oh Oh no, I've dropped, I've dropped. What am I gonna do? <laughs> what am I gonna do? And then in a little bit, it should just come back up. There we go. So awesome stuff. We've now added ether channels on both Mikrotik and Cisco. Um, I'll create some more videos on adding the VLANs because there is a little bit of extra work for that from the Mikrotik side, but that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.